Welcome to the Scene Weekly Podcast, where we hearken back to our college debate days and pick two movies of the same theme with shaved chest, some tape, some mics, and a burning for the law. But where does it actually begin and where does it actually end, Stephen? I don't know. This week's episode is focused on undercover cops with the movie Original of Originals and Internal Affairs coming against The Departed. The Departed. You got to drop your R's, Jonathan. Yeah, I don't know how to drop the R's, but uh, I will, I guess, need some assistance from you throughout this. Come join Jonathan and Steven for another, I don't know, another week of what? What are we doing today? Desirably <laughs> less plot chatter with hopefully more film banter. We are Scene Weekly and welcome to our world. We're here, season two. We made it. We're still trying to make it. All hundred of you watching. But The Departed, you know, I, I, I am still unsure of how this is going to play out because this is my, you can blame somebody and that somebody is me if this ends up being a, a poor decision. Went back and forth because uh, Stephen, I, I always, not always, I often have given him the, uh, the better of the movies and the choice factor like Crimson Tide and a variety of others throughout the the back end of this but this uh ron i i demanded uh with that being said but for this one as you chose the departed i was like i have so many to pick and choose and i was like clearly infernal affairs is i think a worse movie but i was like it's the original the original of the originals and we had to do it so if it's uh redundant well you can blame me it feels <laughs> redundant to be honest <laughs> It is going to be very redundant. I mean, Which we're basically one did you talking. Watch first? Well, I obviously, obviously, I saw The Departed first years and years ago when it came out. No, um, no, no. But on no, this rewatch, this time, yeah, this time, uh, The Departed again. I watched The Departed, and then I went back oh, to okay. Infernal Affairs. Yeah, I did the same. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're going to be retreading kind of the same plot and story, but there are key differences here. Um, yeah which I, I'd like to, you know, obviously expand upon. Boston and Hong Kong. That's a key. Uh, there's difference. one. Yeah, there's yeah. one. <laughs> um, <laughs> subtitles and, uh, you know, the, the Boston Incorrect accent. Some occasionally, I will add. Oh, really? You, you know Chinese? You know Mandarin? No, I don't. I don't. But I, I assumed as after watching... I don't know how many subtitled movies. I was like, that doesn't seem too accurate. It's probably going to... Yeah, they probably have to... Even what the even the point? title of the film they had to change. Yeah, I uh, I like the original, like the the, the play on um, like it meant unending road or ceaseless path or the, the uh, never ending way. I mean, there's de- definitely different ways. Play on to Buddha, it. which in essence of Infernal Affairs, I should say, not The Departed. Um, I like The Departed too, though, in the fact that they're they they use it. <laughs> it's a Family Guy episode all over again. <laughs> they use the. Uh, the name in the movie. Uh, Matt Damon, I think, was the first to use it. No, the Daily the Departed. The Departed. <laughs> yeah. Um, interesting similarities, even like the similarities between the bagpipes at the end. I'm yeah, just, I was su- you know, I was surprised yeah. to see, uh, you know, Hong Kong have bagpipes. But I mean, it's a cultural thing throughout the world, you know? Yeah, people dying is. Yeah. For sure, a cultural thing around the world. Um, have you, you ever... Have in your culture... Yes, yes. Um, primarily when I when I revisit afterlife films and Coco and What Dreams May Come. That's mm. can that's we the ever get these the Shopify? We should buy more. We should uh, we should set up an online store and sell our merch. How do you do that? Ah, I'll figure you it out. We'll get an intern the guy that that set up your shirt. <laughs> yeah, can they be an extern? Because I don't want them to live with me or you. I got room on my couch. It's fine. Mm. I could maybe help pay rent. Wow, that's... Now you're just bragging, I think, at this point. Yeah, exactly. So anyway, Undercover Cops, this was your idea. This is one of you. your... Yeah, have you ever met an undercover cop? Mm, That would be... Not a very good one, right? (laughs) Right, exactly. (laughs) Like... I mean, I, I don't know how to even answer this, but I, I haven't met an undercover cop. Um, I, I can't tell you, you if I have or not. Maybe I have uh, without me knowing. It's very possible 
that um, a plain clothes person. I mean, I'm not doing any drug deals or anything like that. Um, You're just doing but, the drugs. <laughs> no, not not that either. Uh, mm. But I uh, I don't know. It's it's an interesting uh, concept. Um, an undercover. Do you cop. think you? I think you'd be very good at being an undercover cop. I think Say you'd be it, very. I think you'd be very good at being an undercover cop. Say that I was. Um, Are would you? I have to, oh, John, Jonathan? You know it. You know you we can't really you discuss can't these things. Old yeah. <laughs> you promised me you wouldn't ask me that question. <laughs> uh, but I think you would be good at it. Yeah, lies, deceit. No, I don't know. Logical lies. I don't know if it's the lies or deceit that I'm really getting at or hinting at. I am, or not even hinting. I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking that you would be pretty good at it. Okay. You'd be like, I have this path that I've chosen, the ceaseless path, unwavering, unending road. And you're like, well, I have to do this. This is my job. And so therefore I'm going to do it well. And if to, to do it well, I have to, to lie, but it's for the greater good. And these people, what they're doing over here is like, they're not even in the gray area. They're breaking all types of laws. And so you're saying this is a minuscule version of, of breaking of the laws in, in which I have created my moral box. And I think uh, you can get by, at least in your own intellectual brain, by saying, yeah, yeah, I'm, at least I'm a better person than that. And I'm, I'm doing it to ensnare and prevent people from hurting others, ultimately. Yeah. And uh, I think you'd be all I, right at it. You could lie I, to yourself. I, I have, uh, you know in my younger years thought, man, it would be cool to be an actor. Um, but being an undercover cop or even like, you know, something like that, you're just acting all the time. This is 24 seven. Do you think it becomes like part of who you are? I think it has oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Where does it definitely. end? Though? Like, do you, is there like a particular notion of like, yeah, I killed 17 people, 18. Mm, that's a, that's too many. You can't do that. Like what? Where does the line, you know? I mean, you could see it in uh in both in, in both movies basically. Like you could kind of see where the the different undercover cops are just like, God damn it, I need to get out of this. I've been doing this for years, both on both movies. I mean, because they quite literally are almost a carbon copy of each other. Or I should say, um, Infernal Affairs was first, uh, and then Departed pretty much just ripped every idea from this movie i would say uh and pretty much copied it almost to a t there's some changes of course like citizens in the envelope and uh bodyguard for example and some like upgrades i would say but they live in a world of uh, imagination and i cannot imagine this because you cannot basically share it it, it appears until uh, a psychologist is is trying to communicate with you who else do you share this with you know, uh, priest it's like Spider-Man. Yeah. Do you, can you share it with the priest? Definitely not a Boston priest. Can you? Would you? Man, you probably has like, just like you strapped to the gills. Is that a saying? I don't even know. I think it is. But yeah, I mean, you make your t-shirt out of that strapped to the gills and the head strapped to the gills. <laughs> yeah. Um, you shall sell it on our spot or Shopify. Uh, yeah, it would be, it would be tough living a, a life where you're basically lying to yourself the entire time. Yeah. Where, where does it stop? Where does it end? Does it end? Um, it doesn't I end. I think it's a game of winning and losing and, and ultimately you're, you're, you're dying if you're losing. And uh, I mean, for these characters, I, I often, I don't know how many times you thought of it and I was just like, why? <laughs> like, and maybe I'm, that's why I'm not an undercover cop and or cop and or somebody in, in any of these movies. And I was just like, it, it, first of all, like, it's kind of like religion to me. You have to suspend your disbelief and watching these, both of these movies. Uh, there were times where I was getting like too detailed and I was like, this is so ridiculous. I'm getting detailed. Just have fun. Like you don't have to make sense of everything. Um, but some, some parts of it, I was just like, why, why, why are they like, there's not even, there's not an ulterior motive, not an ulterior motive. There's not an influence to, for each of the characters who are undercover to be like, yeah, like getting in my, you killed my whole family, you know? It's not like an old boy or like John Wick story. It's like there's nothing to like hang your hat on. It's just like it's just like 
He, yeah. You went to you went into the police academy. On Friday, I wasn't too busy, so I thought I would just go undercover for years, and then I just fuck some people up. Like, what are we talking about here? <laughs> both movies, though, like it's it's equally as much. I was like, both. I was like, what is happening? Like, and why? Are I they mean, doing- granted, there was there was a lot more setup in The Departed versus Infernal Aff- Infernal Affairs. You're kind of just thrown right into it. Like, here here's yeah. the setup. The first the- twenty is like, yeah. All right, now the movie. <laughs> where at least the departed we we saw you know a young matt damon at or you know as a kid being basically the father figure of uh of jack nicholson and you kind of understand like okay there's there's a long history there now with leo's character you kind of see that he's kind of lived both sides of the the boston life and the high life and the the yeah. southy life but you don't you don't get the mo- motive of like why he would do it. Maybe he just thought it was going to be like an undercover gig for like a short time and they would get him, but it just kept going it, like forever. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I, I still don't really truly understand. I mean, I guess at the very beginning of Infernal Affairs, they're you know sitting there hanging out with Buddha, and Boss Man's like we're we're blood brothers at this point, and then you know it's like moving on with life. But um, which I I think. If you've watched any amount of Asian cinema, it's very, especially like early 2000s Asian cinema, I would say. And even in the way like the, I've seen it so often, like a, the way the, things are edited, like the the black, which is interesting because <laughs> Scorsese does the same, like the 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 little, I don't even know what to call the it. The James the Bond kind paper. of uh, scope. Yeah. yeah, they yeah. both do it. I don't know if he was like giving a... a tipping his cap to the two directors. Well, but. allegedly, uh, Martin Scorsese um, stayed away from watching the film because he didn't want to have any kind of influence on his directing of it, which is very funny because there's like, I mean, scene for scene, like exact replicas. Maybe that's in the writing too, but I don't so, know. So, so, so I've seen multiple reports. What's What am I talking about? Like I saw that <laughs> there was some report that basically said, oh, after like he was making the movie or like done, it's like, oh, didn't know about Infernal Affairs. And that's then my like, oh, Yeah, I was like, that's first of all, absolutely. <laughs> Mars Scorsese is a rat. <laughs> I was like, that is impossible because I could give you 4,000 reasons why. Um, but then the other one was uh, somewhat a uh, halfway step between what I just said and what you said. And it's like, uh, he didn't want to get influenced. And I was like, really? Really, doctor? Like, why don't you just own up to it and be like, I mean, ultimately, I'll, I'll, get, I'll beat to the punch. Uh, the Depart is just a better version of the story. But there are still pieces that on both movies are just like, what? Does, this doesn't make sense to me. Um, I'd be interested to actually do already an immediate 10 minutes into this. Uh, part two with Undercover Cops. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. I don't know why I had such an issue with both movies and like being hard to like uh, justify the existence of these undercover cops and their their well desire. the genesis of uh, all of this Infernal Affairs you know leading to the Departed um, the directors of Infernal Affairs really liked Face Off and they wanted yeah. to... <laughs> that and was that was high on my list Wu. by the way that was high on my list of undercover cops. Um, yeah, they they went and made two more. Haven't seen those, but yeah, I imagine other people die in them. I I would be interested to see the stories, but not that interested, if you know what I mean. I'd like to see the trailer of them, but one that exists in a capacity of bo- really boiling down the movie into a three minute section, and I just want to watch that. Just the cliff notes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because anytime you get like you know the only other movie I can think of that. Uh, would be like this that you could do like twice and three times would be death note that worked out like really well because it's like if you watch the trailer for death note you'd be like what the fuck is going on and this is some outrageous nonsense and then you watch the movie and you're like oh this is outstanding and then you watch the second trailer and you're like there's no way they could do this again like identically and then they do it I, I, almost in like identical way and you're like oh that was probably even better this is un- unreal I is it like the Saw that. franchise? Just like the Asian horror version of that? Uh, Saw was pretty good for one and two. Three, I just went downhill. But like, uh, yeah, yeah. 
but Saw Saw could still be replicated over and over in a good way. I think it could you could just rehash that. But for for uh, the Departed Part Two, what are you going to do next? I mean, they they actually I, they were going to put one in development with uh, Marky Mark's character, uh, but I don't know. I don't know. I mean, everybody. How's that going to work? <laughs> Love That'd to see him in a cool though. Yeah. yeah, in a track suit, just picking on people. Yeah. What do, What do you What are your thoughts on rats? Do you like rats? I mean, another. Another big problem that people have with this movie is that it's not about a rat; it's about a mole. <laughs> it's, that's the I mean, the last scene of The Departed. What were your thoughts on that? You know, it's very on the nose. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really, Doctor? And a lot of people have problems with this. And Me I, too. I, I did. I I understand. It's it's like Martin Scorsese, just like, all right, now I'm going to put a nice, pretty bow on this picture. Yeah, and, yeah, and people people sometimes don't want pretty bows on their, their their gritty crime movies. You know what I mean? Like that's. I mean, I would actually like less of the rat and and take more of just the nonsense that happened at the end of the Departed. Because I, I mean, first of all, I love the Departed. I think it's a better movie and it's fantastic. And but I do I I had I guess two and a half major things wrong with it in my view. First of all, I, it, they're both movies are great. It was a very fun week, but like. They were so large. I'm just like, it kind of, it just angered me throughout. I was like, who the fuck is this, this woman psychologist breaking all types of her own? Like, I don't know. I just didn't like that. And I was like, it's another version of the departed. Basically, she's departing from her own morality box that she's agreed to in her entire existence. And she's got two dudes that are intermingled who don't know each other, do know it. It's just like. I don't know. I don't know what that existed to begin with. They didn't have to have that in both stories, uh, mind you. And I was like, it just annoyed me equally. The second part um, was just the, the why they're undercover cops it just didn't make sense. You know? How long has it been since you've seen The Departed? Uh, it's been a while. I think I've only seen it once. So this is my second time, I want to say. Oh, Maybe wow. I've seen it a third time with, with uh, the old wife, probably. Uh, so yeah, probably the third time. Infernal Affairs, I think this is only the second time as well. And then the, the, the rat would be like, this is silly. Have you seen Matchpoint? It reminded me of Matchpoint. Matchpoint, the Woody, Woody, uh, Woody Allen yeah, movie? Yeah, with the ring at the very end, which happens to God, also I don't be remember Allen that. Hit, which also tends to be uh, uh, that moment where people, I would imagine, get very angry. Orange juice again, here we go. <laughs> Diabetes, everybody. The next time you see old Steven with the uh, with one less finger or toe here, um, you know this is the reason why. But the the ring that was bouncing at the very end of the movie, ding, 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 ah ding, yes, that that I didn't like either. But there was significance behind that. But the rat anyway. I'm gonna just this is gonna be a diatribe of anger and and ultimately remorse tomorrow when I think about what we're trying to say here. But anyway, undercover cops. You were very excited about this. I don't even know. We've already started 20 minutes in on mixing and mashing. I kind of I like mixing and mashing more, to be honest with you. This is an episode that if any any episode, we need to mix and match because yeah. we're basically talking about the same movie um, yeah. set on two different worlds. Why don't we go into the synopsis, the backgrounds, and then we'll just mix and mash and see how this works out and compare the two. I think that'd be best. Okay. Uh, let's It'll start with The Departed. Okay, it'll probably be a, a shorter version, but I, I like the mixing and mashing. Um, it's a lot more fun. So, Departed came out in two thousand six. Uh, it won best. I like picture. how you're like, we're doing the De- Departed. <laughs> this isn't <laughs> we're even doing it. There's no discussion here. Um, Infernal Affairs came out first. Come on. Yeah, I know, but it, we're we're kind of backtracking here, so this is going to mm. be better. Go on. Uh, it won best picture. And best director at the Oscars it was Martin Scorsese's first and only uh, best director win. When he made this film, he wasn't even thinking about the awards. He was thinking that this is going to be too gritty and just too, you know, it's not for the Academy, basically. But he won. Um, 151 minute runtime. Uh, we don't get the opening title card until 18 minutes in. Um, we get uh, Gimme Shelter by the Rolling Stones. Uh, this is his third time using that uh, soundtrack 
in a movie uh, before it was Goodfellas and Casino. So he really, really likes this song. Um, a budget of $90 million. Half of that, $45 million, was for the actors, for the cast alone. It is a stacked cast. You got Leonardo DiCaprio, Matt Damon, Jack Nicholson, Marky Mark that? Wahlberg, Martin Sheen, Ray Winstone, Vera Farmiga, Alec Baldwin, and more. Um, <laughs> 90, Who's that? Not, Andemore? Andemore? Andemore. Yeah, it's just a bit part. Uh, 91% on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, that's the basics of it. I'm not going into the plot yet, but you can go into Infernal Affairs and give us the deets. Yeah, so Infernal Affairs came first. It was a, a lovely 2003 edition of Undercover Copisms. 101 minutes, Andrew Lau and Alan Mark, or Mach, uh, actually, I don't know if they wrote this. Did, did I didn't actually look that up, but they directed, co-directors. Always interesting on in co-directing because oftentimes you actually see kind of like talking about Shakespeare and you're like, oh, this doesn't sound like his voice. You're like, oh, this, I bet that was a different person who's directing this section. Uh, but anyway, I, I thought that throughout. 2003, our crime thriller, thriller 94%. Six and a half, basically on budget, and fifty-five in the box office, which is uh, extremely good for a Hong Kong or Chinese. It was a hit. It was big. Yeah, it's a big hit. It was a big hit. I think the only Spider-Man and like Harry Potter, I think, were the only two movies at this time that actually like ousted ousted its uh, kingdom. But yeah, I mean, they're. Um, I mean, do do you want to go into the Departed? I mean, it's basically the plot is identical. If if <laughs> if there is a plot. Um, there's no difference between the two. We just change some names, Boston, Hong Kong, and then, uh, you're pretty much the same there. Irish mafia triads. Yep. Uh, you got, you what got... would you rather be in by the way? A try, would you go in the triads or would you be in the Irish mafia? What do you think would be best for you? Assuming though that your, your, uh, intermingling of like you are Irish, for example, and you would be, um, from Hong Kong. And so forth. Okay. All right. That because I it would it, be, it, it be, would be a weird look. Change. You're neither Irish and you're, you're just gonna it's gonna <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be tough either way for you. He's the he's the guy. He's the mole. <laughs> he's look the mole. At look him. at him. He looks nothing like us. <laughs> Doesn't even that's have a, an accent. Come on. That's an SNL skit right there. Yeah. That'd be great. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, I I mean I've never been to Hong Kong. Uh, I like the food. Um, I. I would fit in better. Boston like once. I used to, I used to live in New England. Did you go to Boston Boston? many times? How many times? I lived in Nashua, New Hampshire. Of course I've been to Boston. So you know it how intimately? I mean, I've been to Fenway probably three or four times. Um, I did that road trip with, uh, you and the guys. We went through Boston. You don't, you don't say, um, I've, 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 I've experienced Boston. It's a good college town. I've been there. I've been there fifty times at least, and I wouldn't say that it would be a definitive nature to say that uh, it would be my my go to. I th- I would prefer um, the non Boston, definitely the triads. I would say I like the the moral code more of the uh, the Asian moral code. The Irish code doesn't seem to be as uh, strict. That being said. It's a little bit loosey goosey. You kill this guy, yeah. you got to kill that guy. You can't talk to this guy. This guy you can punch. You can't punch this guy. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. Uh, but anyway, police cadets. Otherwise, uh, in the both movies, very difficult. As I was trying to like write my notes down, um, it's just hard to keep track of the names on both movies. It's because there's just so many characters. I mean, the forty-five yeah. million definitely went to to good use, and um, I think I would take the triads. Ultimately speaking, but who do you think was the standout star in each? Um, I love Leo's performance. I think this was like his his big breakout, like acting performance. Like he was in the Aviator previous to this. It was good. Yeah. Um, Gangs in New York. It was a little sh- little shoddy. He was overshadowed by Daniel Day Lewis. Obviously, he came to fame with Titanic, but this was like, and he he also did Blood Diamond at the same year, year as this. But I think this was a better performance. Um, Way better than Blood Diamond. Oh my god. Uh, Matt Damon as that that just he's just a just a shitty person you yeah. know what i mean like he's just uh um pretty terrible 
I mean, pr- terrible to everyone around him, except yeah. one person. Yeah. He, and you can just see his like his fakeness. Uh, he, he plays a, he plays a great kind of character like that. Um, Jack is back in the 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 the, the gritty kind of roles. Um, he hadn't played a gritty role since like a few Good Men. Uh, he was doing like you know the romantic comedies and things like that. So this gave him a chance. Um, he was a little over the top. So was Marky Mark Wahlberg. Who's your favorite? I'm, I'm I'm going over it. Okay. The, <laughs> the one that I, I, I think just killed it for me is Leo. I think Leo, he, he described his performance as like being on a 24 hour anxiety attack. And you felt that in his character. I think he did yeah. a great job. I think he did a great job. I like Jack the most, though, for sure. Jack, huh? Yeah, because he <laughs> he had he had. I like moments where and Leo had it too, actually. But he was, his moments were speaking with Jack, um, and that that I really truly noticed it. Um, to be serious, like to be to give it its due, there wasn't anyone really that stood out in um, Infernal Affairs. I think just the acting was completely overshadowed uh, by the Departed and the actors of of the Departed. It's got to be Jack. I liked there was the instance with Leo Billy character of him saying, giving him, providing him information to see if it was going to come to bite him in the ass to see if he was a mole, you know, smoking him out as, as it, you know, we're undercover cops at this point. We can start using the lingo and the jargon, right? Yeah, of course. So he, <laughs> I mean, you're talking in an Irish accent. You're already in the mafia, I think. Get him, not me. My mom's from Brockton, Massachusetts, born and raised, but he's, anyway. So, I liked Leo and I liked pretty much everyone. There were times where old Mark was annoying me. I was like, okay, dude, just <laughs> we got the character that you're, you know, it, it, he like almost came out of himself. You know, it was just, it was so much, uh, but I did appreciate it. And you especially appreciate it as, at the end. And also after you realize like, he's not a bad guy. Or in spoilers. The- <laughs> And, but Jack, in the moment where he himself is trying to figure out the mole, trying to smoke out who he thinks Leo is, or potentially, and uh, dropping his gun and playing with the gun, that moment of like Jack kind of his character, I should say, Costello, like not knowing, being a little insecure, and just dropping the veil of like, being tough and dropping the gun was like so metaphorical and so perfect. I thought, and also Leo's reaction to being like, what's about to go down, but you can see it like painted in that anxious face of his, like what the fuck is going on? Like what? And you could, that pure anxiety, that scene, that quick scene, maybe two minutes, maybe my favorite were, and then, you know, Costello leaves and Costello's coming back because he forgot his cigarettes. And uh, just the whole chatter of those two minutes is probably my favorite part of the whole film. Just the awkwardness between and just the fleshing out of like what's actually happening. And both characters are like, who are you? Who are you? Who am I? I don't know. And it's like this weird play on what's actually existing. Uh, and it's fun to, to be the viewer watching it all happen and unfold. But my favorite part. But Jack was my favorite. Yeah. Like, I mean, every scene. His death, it, his death was like interesting to say the least. Yeah, but every scene that yeah that Jack was in that Frank Costello, I mean they they had to flesh out the part um, more in the script because uh, they they cast Jack Nicholson um, and originally Martin Scorsese wanted Al Pacino that was his first choice uh, I like because I had never worked with him yeah I like Jack too although Jack Jack wouldn't uh, he wouldn't wear a Red Sox hat he refused to wear a Red Sox hat uh, because he's a Yankees fan. <laughs> This is why I like Jack so much. <laughs> he just doesn't give. He has a, principles. He he does actually have principles. Again, I, I go back to the story with Hunter S. Thompson. Uh, just lovely guy. Um, but fantastic actor. I wish I I wish Jack has done more stuff. I wish he did more things that were that stretched his ability because I think he is one of the greatest actors of all time. Oh, like 100 percent. I'd like to, like as good as it gets. I'd like to see him in something that um like another I don't know, anything else. It'd be interesting to see him as as Batman instead of the Joker. Just curious. I mean, but not not now. Um, but 
No, let's do it now. <laughs> you want to put, but okay, that'd be an interesting one. Old man. What Batman. are your thoughts on on removing floors? Because I believe I'll have to check the Departed again because both have elevator scenes, multiple elevator scenes for that matter. And in America, we skip the thirteenth floor. I mean, it's unlucky. And and most of Asia, especially Chinese, in Chinese, if you were to say uh, death, it sounds like four. And so they skip four in Korea. When I was there, I I had no idea about this. Keep in mind, I didn't have my first Korean meal until I was on a Korean air flight. I had kimchi and bibimbap. And then uh, I just just the first day, I was like, why four? And I was, of course, you know, I'm not challenged or that challenged i should say mentally and so i was like well, why are they skipping four and why is four skipped oh it must be like an unlucky number and um here and then i realized you know somebody told me it was because of death what are your thoughts on that because like the people on like the <laughs> the people on five are on four it's just the number in the elevator that's off everything's the same right so like the people on five have got to be like Mm, but the elevator told me I was on five. It's a psychological just, mind game. It's I mean, just what a poor you... translator. <laughs> I'm okay, right? I'm good, thanks. Like what? Maybe there's maybe there's a small little floor for rats that can just like you know that's <laughs> just right there. That's the fourth floor, and the thirteenth. Oh, thanks. thanks. I like uh, I like the floor that the half floors like being John Malkovich. Those are my favorite. By yeah, far. but. What about what about the fourth and thirteen? Like, what are your thoughts on that? Like, how silly, uh, how silly twats we are as human beings, being like <laughs> the floor still exists in everyone's mind and world, but the elevator says it doesn't, so it doesn't exist. Yeah, it's kind of ridiculous. I mean, we're but we're we're creatures of uh of luck and fortune and rituals, and I mean that's uh, what we tell ourselves is true. We're dumb. Right? A hundred percent. We that's why we don't even have negative numbers. We like basement one, basement two, basement three. You can't go negative one, negative two, negative three. That's Let's that's just that. that's that's too that's too negative. You've got to be positive here. <laughs> but, <laughs> okay. That makes sense. I mean seventy percent of our thoughts I think are negative, so but anyway, it's yours, I, I, not mine. Yeah, well, I think it's uh science. Um, but nonetheless. But it, it was interesting watching the departed first in that Going from The Departed, watching the editing that actually like made this movie, Scorsese, like it was just pretty tangibly different after watching the the two of them, and the production was extremely different. Um, but I really, uh, I had a variety of scenes that I'm glad weren't copied. Like for example, in Infernal Affairs, the speakers that uh-huh. I really, really, truly appreciated in the music. Uh, pretty much throughout Infernal Affairs, I actually liked probably more. I understand Boston, you know, they he's he's dialing into the Boston scene, but I have never. Anyway, I'm not going to speak poorly, but like, you don't like Dropkick Murphys? Is that what you're saying? They're okay, you know, they're good for uh for what they're worth. But I I really appreciated. First of all, I didn't even know the music that was playing um, in Infernal Affairs, but it was terrific, and it was great in the way that it was actually presented, and it was great in the way that like the scene um, transitioned from like this this is like perfect. Uh, and he's like, yeah, I got something better for oldies. Check this uh, check this wire out, and then they, he connected connected, and he's like, this is better. Oh my god! But I, I like that scene, and then I like the replication when um um. The wife sure finds out. But I like the departed where the, the psychologist was pulling the plug while she's listening. And then Matt Damon's character. Yeah, it was a small kind of like reflection of, of Infernal Affairs, which was cool. Um, there's, there's a lot of things that were identical, um, mainly like the, uh, you, the envelope with the writing. It obviously, it was different, yeah. you know, different writing. Yeah. Um, the scene in the, the movie theater, the other one was a porn theater. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it was it was kind of interesting in Infernal Affairs when they were walking through the hallways of the movie theater and they had all of the uh, American action movie posters like Men in Black and Harrison Ford and K K Nine the Widowmaker and, and things like that. It's like this is what they're influenced by too. Like this is like you know yeah uh, what they're what they're watching obviously. Um, but I thought that was that was kind of cool. 
and you know, notwithstanding the the motives of the, the characters of these movies, but would you? Let's say you're making. I mean, cops on Long Island make tons of money. Let's not. Let's use like. Let's just use a random number. Let's say you're making thirty thousand dollars. You're having a tough time, you know, saving money. Let's say you're a cop. Always wanted to do what's best. Uh, present. Uh, prison, uh, a person presents uh, an opportunity for you to, to make let's call it triple what you're making now would you become a criminal if you if that opportunity was knock knock knocking at your door like a dirty cop like not not straight and narrow well, but let's like not go take dirty, a bribe Steven. let's let's you know let's not call it a bribe per se just yet let's just say that you know let's frame this let's say that you may have had to move one thing from here from a to b or you may have had to do some different types of paperwork to have a relationship with somebody who who knows how you're going to frame it i'm just saying you're going to get paid maybe it's in cash maybe it's not maybe your parents are taken care of but could you deal with yourself could you live with yourself could you could you do something like that it uh, depends on uh what's What's the damage? Who gets hurt in this? Well, let's say it's just all you. Let's say it's not your family. How about that? Let's start there first. No, I wouldn't do it. That's it? I, for me, <laughs> for me, I, let's I say have there's a 90% chance you get away with it, but a 10% chance you do not. And do not is have, your... You're hung by your your the rafters and and just strung out, blood bleeding to death. No, I have a I have a guilt complex. Like if I do, if I do something and I know it's it's wrong or bad, uh, it, I it's like you know you, the, the saying like how do you go to sleep at night? Like I I will toss and turn. I just can't do it. It's not. Do you? It's not, yeah, yeah. Do I you I, think I do. That, do you? Do you think that other people have like a different guilt complex though for you and have different ideas and your ideas are just adequate for yourself and you've convinced them? No, I think I think what you're saying is own? you can you can rationalize in your mind and jump through hoops and say, okay, I'm doing this because I need the extra sixty grand to pay for my daughter's chemotherapy. And yeah. that's for the greater good. So that's why I'm gonna do it. But I don't have a daughter who has chemotherapy, Jonathan. Yeah. I'm just I'm but, I'm buying vapor flies and bicycles. Like I I don't I don't need another sixty grand. That sounds not you now, but I'm saying in a situation where you're making only thirty thousand dollars a year, you haven't been able to save anything until you're forty years old. You've got nothing to your name, and you you know ultimately let's say you do have somebody to take care of, but it's yourself. No? There's uh there's gray areas in everything, right? I'm be- I'm I'm becoming a criminal. Sure. yeah like i don't understand if i if i am the one that's going to be harmed and there's nobody else involved fuck yeah bring it on like wh- what are we talking about here we, we haven't even defined the terms yet we haven't even gotten to the, the 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 discussion of like what needs to happen like who's who's gonna get off i'm not even talking about that i'm talking about just you know some paperwork here and there that's all yeah i'll do some paperwork sure it's a white collar crime then is what you're saying I haven't even defined it. I mean, maybe it's just you know some some beige collar crime. My Who my knee jerk reaction is you're setting me up for something. I think and... I bought you four felonies a day. Did you read that? No, you didn't buy that for me. You uh, you said you could bought me how to how not to die alone or something like that. Yeah, that sounds like you should read that one first. But um, have you read that by the way? Not yet. No, I'm br- reading so, uh, so the breeze this book. Point, you're- you are going to die alone. I um, You're still reading Breathe. My God, you read so slowly. Anyway, um, I think I'd become a criminal depending on the, if, if you give me the facts and, and circumstance or the, the pattern, the fact pattern here. Strong likelihood um, in both of these situations. Now, if, if I have got a daughter who's got needs chemotherapy, I, this isn't even a question. The answer is yes. What do I have to How many people do I have to kill? 7,000? <laughs> Give me a bazooka <laughs> and a lot of All right. ammo. So I, I, I that would be I, I'm shocked by this, but I guess let's let's take a step back. You're not a criminal, clearly, uh, although you do commit four or more 
felonies a day. And uh, have you ever followed somebody or like just tried to just to see what would happen as like a gag? No, that's that's never that never once crossed my mind to be like that. Even after watching Christopher Nolan's The Following, yeah, yeah. Um, that's never crossed my mind to actually do that because uh, I wouldn't know what to say if I got caught. <laughs> that would be very, be very weird. I've never followed somebody, but I've always thought like in these following scenes, which are in undercover cop movies, there's like always a following scene, and it's pretty a much cat all and mouse game superhero yeah. movies. There's always somebody being followed, and I'm like, I I wonder how many times we have been followed, if ever. You and I, like in real life, do you think anyone's like actually followed us? I actually, I know I have been followed. I don't want to go into the details of this, but. Now, what about just like in a room, you follow somebody with your eyes? Is there, are you are you talking about physically walking into different different areas, down alleyways and, and things like that? Like, what are we talking about here? I'm talking about alleyways, like following somebody in that capacity. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I've never done that. No, I haven't either. Um, but it, it would be interesting because like it's a talent that I have, I have not refined. I haven't even tried so it'd be interesting to see if like we're even good or bad at it but it seems that everyone else as well is not really great at following you know what i mean and both movies they're like oh clearly i need to silence my phone uh i should have done that before but i'd be interested to see like um if i could follow you i might try it one day i'll like put a hat on and sunglasses and come to mountain view and be like there's steven let me see if i can make it all the way do you think you would notice? Yeah, I'm pretty observant on that fact. Like, I, I are uh, you? You watch people following you? I mean, I, I I've been described as having eyes in the back of my head. So I, I don't think know who I these could... people are. <laughs> Somebody I'm very observant is what I'm saying. You think you're observant? Yeah, yeah. Interesting. But but I I do it in a way that people people think the opposite. So it's it's even better if you get my drift. I get your drift. I, I would say that um, you, like my wife, have extremely selective uh, focus. And when your focus is used, you can focus. And when it's not, you are oblivious to life. <laughs> Completely <laughs> oblivious to life. Like the world does not exist oblivious to life. And I know that because I see it in your face. It's painted the both of your faces. You're very similar. And I, I know that look. It's a look of like plugging back into the matrix. What and about I, you? I, do you, do, do you think I could follow you and you would notice or you would notice? What do you think? It depends uh, where it would be. If Are you driving? Let's say you're walking through uh a store let's say like a Dwayne reed and then you're going into another you know you're just in new york city basically walking yeah. the streets going in stores and stuff like that yeah i would notice for sure i think you could easily drive uh you could follow me in a car even if i was wearing like a big wig sunglasses <laughs> tie-dye shirt i i, I uh <laughs> i'm pretty anxious and obsessive of like i'm the i'm always like i'm the the crazy person who walks into the movie theater and where's the exit like planning things if things go awry airports i pay attention to a lot of people so uh in big crowded areas i get i tend to afterwards get pretty exhausted uh like disney world i'm paying attention to like so much going on my head automatically yeah. Are you the type to uh, like go into a hotel room, like first go in and like kind of check everything out, open the shower curtain, like look around? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Including, uh, we had a house upstate for a while. I used to do that in my house upstate. She never knows who's there. Is that crazy? No, it's not crazy. It's it's. I think it's a normal, normal, uh, normal thing. You know, trust know. but it's... verify kind of thing. Yeah, I mean that's my job, and I have. I have an interesting question because it seems like gangsters really, really, truly enjoy scotch. And I, it just seems like a very prevalent thing. And I wanted to know, what is your favorite scotch? 
My favorite scotch is Balvini 12 year Caribbean cask. That's a good that's, one. I've had a lot mine. of that. I haven't had a yeah. lot of that in a very, very long amount of time. The Macallan 21 is terrific, which I bought for my father in law. Is that a sherry cask? I don't know what cask it is, okay. but last year we went to uh, Huntington Prime. Very good restaurant. Very nice seafood and steak and terrific place. Uh, I don't know if it's up to your standards. Um, actually, it's it's probably nicer than your restaurant. But with that being said, um, I got a double, which I didn't know the price of the double. I didn't know the price of the single. And he was just like, two fingers? Like, yeah, sure. Why not? And uh, well, that was like $120. And that came out. And within about two minutes, that was spilled about 80% of it. And I was like, that was instantaneously very bad. But I think uh, the Balvenie, Balvenie, anything I would take all day, every day. That's my favorite scotch as well. But any of the single malts, like the Macallans as well, 21, 18, 15, 12, all good. Terrific. The Caribbean cask is, is delicious though. But why do you think I, uh, scotch is a is a gang, choice of the gangster lifestyle? Like, what's the? What, is it just a is a a very, very machismo? You drink it yeah. straight, neat, a couple ice cubes, you're good. Yeah. That, that proves that you're you're tough. Any alcohol, isn't it interesting? Because like vodka neat is just like pure alcoholism, but like scotch or neat, you're Russian, like, you're okay. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> But like that's not like a, a, I mean, I guess it's a Russian gangster thing to do. But otherwise, like to me, if you're a true gangster, like you should be just drinking straight vodka. I mean, it's there's like nothing to it, you know. I would I try to order something with an umbrella in it. <laughs> We're talking about a uh, lock, stock, and two smoking barrels now. Yeah, exactly. A little mai tai. Uh, but I anyway the uh, to get into the the details of the editing. The editing was the the most distinct difference between the two movies not to go through the similarities because it's too easy there but um scorsese like in multiple occasions i thought chose excellent ways in which the camera either the lens or itself or the actual editing <clears throat> made it feel very very different than the original in that i remember one scene of when you're realizing the character of matt damon um, the psychologist is like unwrapping everything. She's listening to the tape of her speaking or him speaking with uh, Costello. And the, her face, you know, oh, my God, this this can't be really truly happening. And the shower shot that happened because it's like it's a it's an it was an homage on on Psycho. The exact uh, same. You're like. Not breathing, waiting. And then, and it's like, oh, wait, um, I, you know, they, it shocks you back to life. Um, he did that uh, in a, a few occasions throughout that I really appreciated. Um, it was really, really uh, fun though, to watch the. Yeah, the I, um, I agree with you on the, the, edit the editing was, well, first we got to give props to his longtime editor, uh, Thelma, Thelma Schumer. Sh Old Schumer? Thelma. Old Thelma. He's been working with her uh, since the 70s. Um, they are a gr one of the great film pairings of all time because they just they've made so many great movies together but this i, I believe this editing won also the oscar for best editing but anyways i yeah, digress I have. the way i mean there's a big difference in that um that scene at the end in both movies where they're in the elevator and something happens I, you know spoiler alert if you haven't seen this movie i saw this movie in theaters and I was, it was one of the most shocking things I've ever seen. When this guy who you think has, has it wrapped up, he's, he's going to get his life back. He's got the, the rat and the police officer and, and Matt Damon begging for his life now, just saying, please fucking shoot me, kill me. Like, you're like, okay, this is it. And that door opens and just yeah, yeah. boom, shock. Wild. Yeah, for both. Both movies um, with the elevator door opening, it was, it was shocking and uh, less shocking, of course, because I watch Infernal Affairs later. But it's interesting. I, I don't like nice bows being wrapped up. But on that, it was just like everyone's just just capped, like everyone's just getting getting it, uh, which makes sense. And then like the whole Mark Wahlberg thing is like, 
Oh, it, then it's just a you know, whole everyone's like, that was more. I think like a bad, feel, basically it's the feel good kind of ending. Like, OK, yeah. he got his due. Uh, he, but I, I, I was I, it, though, maybe he was bad. Mark, Mark Wahlberg. Yeah, there's a there's a um, a fan theory and you can read into it that Mark was also a, a rat in the police force and working for the FBI through Co- uh, Costello. I don't know. It, there's a lot to read so into heavily. that. Yeah, he talks huh? so heavily that he he talks so much that it seemed like he had to be. He had some of the best lines in the movie, though. I gotta say, <laughs> I mean, they were pretty terrific, but it was like it was a lot um, to say the least. But to to go back to the editing as well, like the the scene um, when Leo was in the mix texting Martin Sheen while Matt Damon is like watching it all go down. I was like, this is one of the most tense. Like, I don't, I don't know. You can't like type in like most tense scenes in cinema. I was like, again, I was like, don't breathe. Don't breathe. This is fucking wild. There was three occasions. Uh, I did that. And the other one was when she was listening to uh, the conversation happening or it happened. Um, he's really good at that tenseness and breaking the tenseness. I'll, t- I'll tell you that the editing, he, um, Oh, Thelma just crushed it. I, I thought the, uh, in infernal affairs, I thought the, um, and it came quick, uh, when you discovered that there was, or when they discovered that there was a mole, uh, in the, in both of the, 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 the units, the police and the, the, the triad. But I love the scene where he's doing the Morse code on the window so- and he's counting, you know, they, they like that. I think that was superior to the way micro su- processes. Way um, better <laughs> in the department. Way, way better, and that that was my major uh, benefit from Infernal Affairs to The Departed. And I actually, if you're, if I were to rip something, it wouldn't be like citizens or like the actual envelope. You can do that in a variety of different ways. The Morris Code was super cool because, like, it actually opens it up for so many other things. Like, it's very telling. At the very end, um, it's not really like like spoken about. But how does he know Morse code? Like you know that I would, I like the, oh wow, he knows Morse code. Maybe he was on to me the entire time. Oh, if he was on to me the entire time, it's like it leads to so many other things besides just having bodyguard on the piece of paper. And then it it opens it up more, but also closes it down. Whereas like seeing the envelope is very, it's clear. Okay, he clearly knows. Um, but I love the Morse code and the Morse code throughout. It was that's pretty cool. Yeah. And I thought, you know, when they uh, were searching him, he has the cast on. I thought, you know, there was going to be something in there. You know, we saw yeah. a little, it was actually kind of a big clip, but like the fact that, you know, they taped it to the, the window and everything like that, it just, it, it, the payoff on that was so, just so good. So good. And it was earlier in the film. Like we, it took us about an hour and 15 minutes to get to that kind of like, you know, who's the mole and, and, and what's going on. Yeah. There was a lot of setup in the departed, but that was like, you know, minute 28 and we're 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 on you know the game is on what do you think makes a good undercover cop movie i was like thinking about this because like it's all the same you have an undercover cop that's good that's bad but is the departed your favorite undercover cop movie i watched donnie brasco uh for the first time like last year what um i just i just don't believe i don't believe any of this crap anymore it's like a you've created anyway go on i'm just gonna say i watched a movie i'm not gonna tell you when i watched it how about that <laughs> no sound good just let me let me be me reacting to what you say how about that all right um i like that movie a lot that's one of the ones that i i, I thought of first um uh but i don't know i mean i think the departed just on a rewatchable level is my favorite yeah, I think so. Donnie Brasco is fantastic. What about Kindergarten Cop? It's pretty good. It's, I was thinking good. also, like, th- I was kind of like seeing if I could uh, blur the lines here, but I was thinking of Blue Streak. I don't know if you've ever seen that movie with Martin, Martin Lawrence. Lawrence. Yeah. He's he's a criminal that becomes, like, he's gets mistaken for a cop. That's kind of a mistaken identity movie or whatever. But Yeah. I Is that Tim... Um, Robbins, who's who else? Tim Robbins who's the, from the Shawshank Redemption. It was the second part to Blue Streak. I don't remember. I haven't saw I that movie in high school. 
it's him and uh tim and i think i've only seen that once and i can't imagine that to be like holding well but maybe it will i think it was pretty funny from what i remember as a 15 yeah. year old you know martin kid. lawrence from that time period is extremely funny um <clears throat> but ultimately i think to get down to brass tacks both movies were equally overboard in what they they had di- they had done but the choice that Scorsese had throughout and Thelma were much better. I mean, version two of this is just better, I would say, overwhelmingly so. But with that, with that said, uh, would you like to go on? Well, did you like the 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 how the Departed combined the the female characters? Like, you know, you had the the wife and the therapist in Infernal Affairs, and you also kind of got thrown in this. Uh, this lady with a kid that, you know, um, kind of alludes to the girl being the, the, the daughter of, uh, uh, you know, the the undercover uh, gangster six years old. I always get my age wrong. I, I didn't, I didn't like it. Actually. I didn't like either stories though with the, the lady. I just don't, I didn't think she played like an important part of, of either. And, and if she were to be removed, I think it's pretty telling if you were to remove a character, you could be like, that's probably better or like, I don't care. Like either of those answers are probably not great, but who knows? I I don't even know what that movie would look like Um, because I think the tension that exists in the moments of being able to say like, Oh yeah, this is like unfolding or unraveling. um, You'd have to play that out in a different way, considering the fact that the woman was there to unravel that. So, you know, that, that change, and then you wouldn't get that shower scene, for example, so yeah, maybe it changes it drastically, but both sides I didn't like. I will say this for The Departed. Again, I'm not I'm being very nitpicky, but this is why we're we've a, a cinema movie podcast here. So I don't know why I disliked it so heavily that, and I thought it, I, I was like laughing, it was like how bad it was. The shot selection and just production value of like the the shootout scene at the very end with on The Departed or for The Departed. And I was just like, you know, the shipyards. And I just thought it was so poorly executed. It felt rushed. Yeah. Not only rushed physically, like in the movie, but it rushed in the sense of like, I just, you know, I just wasn't that enthralled, I guess. I wasn't interested. The shot selection thought was poor. And then it was just like, here's all your warning signs and, and Billy's, you, you sure you want to do this, Frank? Like, I don't know. Like we were just tailed. Are we being tailed? Like, you know, basically saying, here's your out. And then, um, the cops are just there going in a slow swarm, turning on their lights. And maybe that happens in real life. But I was just like, this is unraveling so strangely, but like so meticulously. And I, I, I don't know. I just thought it was kind of cheese at the, the very end. Yeah. I, I kind of feel the same way. Like the, they were trying to, rush to the plot point that Frank dies and yeah. he's, he's basically doing a job that he doesn't need to do. He has, he said in the film that he doesn't need, he's like, I haven't needed money since I stole Billy, whatever's lunch money in the third grade. Oh, like, pussy. yeah, <laughs> he's, he's doing it because that's his life. That's what, that's what he is driven to do. And he doesn't he's know anything else through and through. Yeah. Some people are so, called Steven, but I, I just didn't like that the you know choice i think it could have been better and i think a lot of the choices that scorsese made were unbelievably fantastic i would have ripped though the uh, the morse code one 100 percent. do you want to hear some taglines i would love a tagline i got a quote for you too um but taglines okay. do you have taglines for both or just one i would imagine just the departed <laughs> i i studied a lot of mandarin <laughs> Uh, and to, to come, no, I don't have anything for infernal affairs. Um, mm. uh, the, the original title though, I will say this is true is Mo Gondu, Mo Gondu. No, I don't even, I see, I don't even know how to say that. Uh, but we kind of talked about it earlier, the never ending way. I do like the pun of infernal affairs for the Americanized version of the title though. Um, uh, great. But yeah, taglines it's pretty for, good. for the departed. First one. Lies, betrayal, sacrifice. How far will you take it? The next three are just, these are three different taglines and it's just one word. Undercover. That's it. (laughs) Underhanded. That's it. Unrestrained. That's it. That's all you got. 
I but, smell a rat. <clears throat> Cops or criminals, when you're facing a loaded gun, what's the difference? I feel like the taglines here are just uh, hashtags that you would put <laughs> in a social media post. It doesn't really tell you anything. This is 2006. Is that, is that it what before it's for? that. I know, but is that, that. What it, but is that like the, you know, is that what they're trying to do? That's the energy that they're, they're giving. Yeah. yeah. Like here's a hashtag and here's another one and here's another one. What? <laughs> it's like, it's like people who are not very good at writing, but are good at like boiling down the essence of like a few things but can't explain it too That's well. That's why we need to make a tagline company <laughs> and just and market our services to that. We're not very good at writing, but we can boil it down. I mean, it is true because the taglines, they are pretty poor. I mean, they're really like, somebody's going to take our idea and be like, I saw this on Mesa, uh, Scene Weekly podcast and boy, just give us a shout if you rip the idea. That's okay. I'm okay with yeah. you ripping it because we're not going to do this. Uh, I Clearly. don't have time to create taglines for things, especially that many movies. AI could probably do this in like a day's time. Anyway, shot selection to to counter on um some uh, to counter what I just said. The scene with Jack, where is it? A play? I don't know what the play he's at, but the red he's an background. Opera. He's, he's an, an opera, opera. and he, it was terrific. It was absolutely terrific. It reminded me of like Al Pacino in uh, what's the devil movie that he was in? Was it was it a red light that was just like on his face? Fantastic though. I don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fantastic. And and Martin Scorsese was devil. playing with these colors. Blue was obviously cops. You see a lot of blue in the police station. Yeah, yeah. Very cold, you know, with Venetian blinds. And then all of J- Jack's world, all of Frank Costello's world, a lot of red. He's the devil. He's the yeah. devil. I like uh, I like the devilish shots. Um. I had a quote. There was a quote that was, how's your mother? She's on her way out. We all are. Act accordingly. <laughs> I was like, that's so good. Only and the Jack. way he says it, the way he delivers yeah, it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Not like me. But um, yeah. I don't know why I have this. Uh, the, but the cell phone scene in the alley of like the chase, the following was super tense. Again, another like top three, very tense. And uh, I was eating... At the moment, I was I was mixing a lot of onions. I was eating onions and, and drinking a seltzer. Have you ever mixed like a large dose of garlic, onions, and seltzer at the same time? I did it at this exact same scene, and so I had to. I actually had to stop. So I don't know if it was the tension of like what was on camera and what I was. Sounds viewing. like a seventh grade science project with a volcano. <laughs> but I had to stop, and I was like. Is this really because I first of all, I love garlic and onions so thoroughly and seltzer, but it was very powerful. So I don't know, like because, you know, actually, as you'll soon realize in How to Not Die Alone, that basically people get into bad relationships because they tend to sometimes get anxious and they think that your heart fluttering from anxiety, which is a bad thing, is something that is attracting you to like a new person, which is in you like marry that you know, literally, but you marry that feeling and you're like, oh, this must be good. I'm excited, which in this instance, I had to stop and I'm like, am I liking this scene? Is it really that tense or is my mouth on fire? Um, but I thought I was going to throw up and then I, I had to pause again and then I rewound the whole thing and it was still tense. And I was like, this is a good scene. It's very <laughs> OK. <laughs> I'm not going to try that experiment, by the way. Uh, you should try it. Otherwise, I love uh, God. I love garlic and onions so thoroughly and deeply to my my soul, my soul, soul that I've, I've, this is like 10 years ago. I have a video of me. Why do I like garlic and onions so much? I have yet to find the answer. We'll be here all week. Scene weekly. Such is life. Um, anything else on either of these two movies that you want to talk about? Yeah. Pink Floyd. Do you like Pink Floyd? Pink Floyd was used in the departed on a variety of occasions, but I, I'm curious to what your, your thoughts are. I've never been like a, hey, let's put on Pink Floyd or I'm at a bar and there's a jukebox. I want to scroll to the Pink Floyd album, Dark Side of the Moon. Like that's not my, that's not my go-to. Um, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to like pretend to be cool and say, hey, I like Pink Floyd, you know, blah, 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 blah. It's just, it's not, it's not my, my jam. I don't, I don't get it. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad you're like not hanging out on the fence. You're more of an opinion. I, I, I just, I never have gotten it. I've tried. It's a, it's kind of, it's got a psychedelic rock kind of thing to it, but I like other psychedelic rock better. Do you like the Grateful Dead? 
Grateful Dead is a little too. I mean, some of it, but it's a little too jam bandy for me. Do you, you know, like I'm not. A, I'm not a, again. I'm not a jam band guy. I don't string cheese incident fish. Like I'm not a fish head. Not for me. All three. I would say I, Pink Floyd is the best of the three, but the, all three, I'm just like, eh, eh. It, 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 uh, here's a hot take. Uh, I also don't like the Beatles. Like I do. I shouldn't say that generally. I would say um, they're probably the most overrated band of all time. And I'm not saying that as a hot take. I genuinely think uh, I, I, I truly don't understand Penny Lane. Oh, but this is going to be people are going to hate me. But Penny Lane, I actually love. Uh, and it's not the fact that they're from Liverpool, just to be clear. Although that it doesn't help their case, but I really, truly don't. I don't know why everyone likes the Beatles. There are some songs I'm like this rips, um, but there's like five of them, and I, I just don't. I don't get it. But Pink Floyd, I really, truly don't get it. Like it's like, yeah, I, I, I if I don't listen to this for the rest of my life, I'm okay. And nor I've never thought I'm gonna put on some Pink Floyd in my whole life. And that may say more about us than it does say about Pink Floyd, with that being said. Although Mr. Waters has been saying some crazy shit in public recently, but we don't have to go into that. Um, two quotes. I do have a couple things to say. Two quotes, and I will leave you with this. I think very tense, but very telling, and these are my favorite probably. Um, you know what I like about restaurants? You learn a lot about watching things eat. And I really like that because if you think about it just with animals and you think about it with squirrels, every go go on the spectrum of your imagination, taking yourself through a ride of watching creatures eat. And it's a very fascinating endeavor to, to think about. For example, like wolves can, you know, eat X number of pounds and tigers and lions um, in a sitting and then us, you know, naturally just eating as well. It's fascinating to think about. And I think there's so much to unpack. There'd be an entire podcast on that one single quote. And I love that. My favorite line of the whole movie. But fucking rat prick is also uh, on the other end of the spectrum of one of my favorite lines. But it, I don't it, think you're going to have a whole podcast episode on the second one. But it, it came out like, like, it was hilarious. guttural. It was it was guttural, but it was hilarious because he also is a rat, and I was like, "I'm laughing out loud right now." Yeah, yeah, it's funny. Um, I mean, I I got to go with uh, one of my favorite quotes again is Mark Wahlberg. Um, I'm the one doing my job. You must be the other guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, have you seen the other guys? For example, yes, I have. I have. Okay, yeah. <laughs> because that. I mean, this is like. He's made for this this role. He's made for like this this cop guy who has these sayings. I mean, it's just outstanding. Um, fucking rat prick, though. So anyway, yeah, I think that's that's it for me. If uh, have you ever punched a door in anger? No, I haven't. I have never had to release myself that way. How do you release yourself? <laughs> <laughs> um. Not not punching doors because then I would have to probably buy another door or go to see a doctor and get casted up. And I think about the consequences of things before I do them. Um, so, yeah. It's pretty arrogant to think that you'd break the door. Well, or I took aunt. Okinawa Tay American Rue Karate when I was in, <laughs> <laughs> in fifth grade. Napoleon Dynamite over here. Better watch out walls. You better watch out doors. You got it coming to you. Um, lastly, but not least, uh, the moment where Leo, Billy's getting into the elevator get, and he's got Matt Damon wrapped. And he's like, you know who I am. But he repeats it like a few times. Like, you know who I am. Like, we went to Academy together. You know who I am. Yeah. And then five seconds later, he gets shot. Up I am. But <laughs> I was like, this is so tense. And, and it, pop, done. Like, I remember the first time I watched it, I was like, what? I thought, no. I thought this was going to work itself out, but it didn't. It was very sinking. I also loved, it's very sinking feeling. I loved Matt Damon's, um, just the way that he greeted uh, Billy Costigan when he was, you know, 
saying like they were sitting in the office together. He's like, yeah, they were just meeting and he puts on this like farce and you could tell he's like, Hey, Troopa. Yeah. Good to see you, buddy. Like it's just almost so heavy handed that it's great. It is heavy handed, especially in the password shot. Cause that, that if like you, you didn't know what was actually happening. For example, if you didn't know somebody was following you, if you didn't know somebody was like in on something, you'd be like, something is there i think human nature is like something's there like password and he's saying it as if like a flipping thing like like he knew he wanted to get in that badly and you could feel it he, wow. and then once he realized he's like, once oh he's i'm going to the other computer now this one's getting all bluey on me yeah <laughs> like huh that's fascinating um but yeah it's but i i don't have anything else i do have a top five Let's oh, do that later. No, we could do top five right now. Let's do top, top five. five. Top five. Okay. Um, what did you come up with this top five uh, about an hour ago? So first of all, I I thought for whatever reason, I just thought these undercover cops were bullies. And after watching this movie, I I thought top five bullies and uh, bullies in, in movies. movies. Yeah, yeah, in, in movies specifically. Yeah, <laughs> that's why I clarified. <laughs> do I want to pick yeah. my top five bullies from fifth grade? I don't know. <laughs> So I, I, I thought maybe you were going to, you know, twist a, and shout here. But by the way, my daughter is learning about clouds today, everybody. Talk oh, you should show her a video. <laughs> she's seen it. Uh, literally. It's the only video she's seen. More than my wife. But nonetheless, top five bullies. And at number five. Who do you got? Barely, barely was able to fit this on here. Am I able to tell my story like in a, I guess a quick manner. I always am. Dudley Dursley, and he's on my top five, and and there are other bullies. Um, but he, I hate. Could he's you expand Harry, Harry upon Potter. what Harry Potter? Okay, Dudley, got it. Dudley, he is. He just for years has ridiculed and hated on his cousin, and I despise old Dudley. If I saw him in person, I think I'd even be truly affected. I hate this motherfucker. Like truly, actually, legitimately, and I think every one of these characters—that's what I was going for. Like, I, I, I saw them on screen. Or I, I googled them again. And I was like, yeah, I, ooh, I really hate you. Still, and I was like, that's that to me is the good bully. So Dudley, fuck you, Dudley. Yeah, fuck. Um, my my number five, my segue into uh, from Okinawa Te American to Karate. I'm going <laughs> Karate Kid. Johnny Lawrence, he's a fucking bully, man. Great choice. Uh, I was back and forth with old Johnny on number five as well, but I felt like Johnny was just a young kid and he was being very heavily influenced. And I would say that his teacher should have been, his sensei would have been more of a bully because it, it kind of his fault. I mean, it kind of, it kind of leaked from the top, right? Yeah. But still he, what a, back in the day, what an asshole he, he was, he was right there with uh, Dudley. I just really like Harry Potter, but number four, number what, what's that? Oh, I was going to go number, number four. four this time. We kind of do it, it to it. My number four uh, is Draco, Draco Malfoy. Um, I think you know who that is uh, yeah, by your love for Harry Potter. Uh, but yeah. just yeah, what a what a what a just throughout the whole series. What an bully! See, the only reason I put Draco as uh, he's off my list entirely. Um, I don't like him. I wouldn't say it's even his father. I mean, it is clearly his father. I mean, if you've read the books and seen the movies, it's clearly. An influence not just from his father but from everyone else um and he actually is a fairly good human being i think but i just couldn't put him because like it wasn't that daily occurrence of being bullied you know where where dudley was uh, i guess technically speaking you you have a good point it may, i actually may have changed my number five to, to draco because he is he's being bullied. made he is actually being made fun of at school which is probably way worse it is way worse but i can't change it uh, number four is Biff Tannen from Back to the Future. Ooh, Fuck yeah, Biff. Biff. That's a good Tannen. one. I hate Biff Tannen. Like every single time I actually watch any of the Back to the Futures, I'm like, this this sucks. And then his son later in Back to the Future 2, I'm like, fuck that kid too. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't like the bullies. I don't like bullies. Even old, old Biff Tannen is just fucking awful. Yeah. They're all bad. Don't like him. Uh, my number three Um we're going the, the female bully route. We're going Regina George. Number three, we share Regina George. What a bitch. Like, seriously. Like, can we honestly, say that? What, yeah. what a bitch. Yes, you can. Of course you can. Everyone. 
what a bitch. I mean, seriously. Like, if there's like a, a feeling inside of me about bullies, like I really hate bullies. Um, but she actually is a, a terrible human being. And you know what? Character. She's pick, she's picking on the new girl, and I've been the new guy yeah. in school, and th- uh, it's like really hits home. It, well, it's it's low hanging fruit. Come on, man! Like Fair. I don't know anybody. Yeah, you're picking on me. Yeah, Whatever. That sucks. You're gonna have to go talk to the guidance counselor about it. My my other two might be different than yours. Uh, these are just like again feelings that are like they're more realistic than Dudley, but nonetheless, nonetheless, I'll go into it too. I have Nancy Allen from Carrie because oh okay you're bullying somebody so thoroughly like that and then the violence within comes Oof. you deserve all the you, you deserve more than you know pig pig blood you deserve it to be hung from the rafters oh that's yeah pretty bad no good my number two um this one just popped in my mind as soon as you gave me the the the, the topic um, of yeah. top five bullies, and this is Scott Farkas. Uh, he is the bully in a Christmas story. Yeah, and he is just a piece of shit. Yeah, um, one of those kids that we don't know who who his parents are, where he's getting it from, but it's probably his parents. Um, but yeah. it's just one of those kids that you just want to punch in the face. A hundred percent. And he was my number one. Like he was the first person I thought of. And for whatever it's worth, I've seen Christmas Story so many times. I he in heart he's my number one. But it, Christmas Story is like fun, loving kind of to some extent. Actually, it's really not if you really like look at the details of. It's kind of dark, story. yeah. It's like a, a miserable marriage, and like it's horrendous actually. But they make it. They he's a terrible human being, but quickly turns. Uh, but fuck bullies altogether. And my number one. Kiefer Sutherland from Stand By Me. He is a terrible, terrible human being, especially like just all his actions uh, were completely unnecessary. And I think that there is a part of Kiefer that may have been a bully to somebody or someone at least once in his life. I mean, or his dad is just too nice. His dad is too nice. I don't know. Yeah. Rest in peace. Um, my number one we shared uh, on this list is Biff. Biff Tannen. Um, I mean... Come Dude. on, McFly. Yeah. What are we doing Just here? Make like a tree. I, I, I don't know. His voice. Have you seen? He has like a two minute or three minute song that he has written about like him being in character and not being in character. Have you seen this? I haven't. No. Like it's, you know. Check it know, out. I don't know his name, but it's terrific. He's singing on stage Did... with a guitar playing. Terrific. I'm going to look it up. Yeah, you should. You should look it up too, viewers. Yeah. <laughs> Bully you into yeah, but that. anyway, bullies, it, it definitely uh, strung me up. But yeah, why don't we get into the rating? Uh, we actually are doing our first of season two. So this is one and two. And our total amount now is uh, because of this is Spinal Tap being episode number 11. We're at 50 and 51 rated movies. And is anyone going to or is any movie going to uh, <laughs> unseat? Mortal Kombat. I'm I'm less concerned about the upper tier of this. I'm curious to see if we ever get into the lower because we've kind of like moved past shittier movies, I would say. Like Drop Dead Fred and Mortal Kombat are just hanging strong. Mortal Kombat being the only one that you've never rated a movie below 70, actually. And it looks from the look of it. 72.5 might be your lowest. But boy, Mortal Kombat's just hanging out. Let's get we should do a we should do a, an episode where we just try and find each other the, the the worst of the worst and celebrate it. And you can't choose the room. No, you know no. it's just you know some because I I even think the room now would be like the problem with finding the worst movie. It actually legitimately has to be like not like a cult classic. I think do you know what I mean? Yeah, you can't do Plan Nine from Outer Space. Like yeah, no. yeah, you can't you can't do something that is so bad it's good. You have to find something truly, truly, truly bad. Um, but nonetheless, let's do it. I'll, I'll go first. Since you, and, well, actually, you did Departed, so why don't you go first? Uh, Departed, um, I gave an overall score of 89.6. I thought it, you know. Highlights, lowlights? It, highlights, lowlights. Um, again, all-star cast. Great acting performances. Um. I wish Marty would drop Gimme Shelter and 
pick a new song, <laughs> a few new songs. Like, come on. Uh, like Tarantino, made- Tarantino, like, I love how he's just like a whole new mix. It's a whole new mix. Like, yeah, mix it up. Like, you pick great songs, Martin. Like, yeah. do something different. Um, this is a this is a movie that I I'm surprised, but not surprised that it won Best Picture. Like, this is what we're talking about. Um, it was up against Babel, Letters from Iwo Babel? Jima. Babel's terrific. It, um, yeah, it is. It's, it's a good movie. Um, I like The Departed better. Um, Letters from Iwo Jima, Little Miss Sunshine, and The Queen. Um, so I, I don't think it was a, a very mm, strong. That's a weak movie year. year. Yeah, yeah, that's a weak year. Um, that- but now there, yeah, there could be ten movies. So, um, but yeah, I, I think it was. This is like again a rewatchable movie for me. Fun movie. It's a little messy, a little pulpy. Um, uh, some little some holes here and there. Uh, we're talking about a mole, not a rat. Um, but enjoyable overall um i'm gonna have to listen to how to say babel it's babel evidently but it's funny uh there's a song from babel the movie and dun, 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 dun. uh not doing a very good rendition of this but that's what uh oh my wife be- uh, this is my this not my decision but my uh idea to walk out to this song, which in the scene in the movie itself is fairly depressing. Uh, but to me, it's one of the most touching songs I've ever heard and very emotive. But uh, from, from that, I would, I would have to give Babel the Oscar nod just because of that song. It's so unbelievably good. Maybe you can, I need to watch it again. It's been a long time. It's been a long time for me too. Um, yeah. So I, I have, I don't know, a very strange relationship with this movie because it's so good. I mean, it's it's my favorite undercover cop, I'd have to say, which that category, I don't think there's a whole lot of great undercover cop movies, like great, like up there. You know, like if you were to say, like, give me your, your best like crime or like thriller, uh, I guess, you know, undercover cop is a uh, step below, but performances were sub- absolutely sublime across the board i think uh some of the quotes were great the lowlights i would say uh would not to their own demise but the screen play and writing is less because it's just such a copycat to infernal affairs like it was like <laughs> what is happening right now if you've ever seen both of them in back-to-back succession you'll understand how significant this actually is the funny thing is, is uh, when Infernal Affairs, they they tried to they submitted their their film for f- uh, foreign language feature <laughs> to the Oscars that year to be considered as a nomination, and they didn't even get nominated. Didn't get it. Yeah, but to be fair, that makes sense. Um, yeah, it's an action Hong Kong action movie. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but The Departed, I gave a ninety one point seven five. I mean, any any time you get, and this would be much higher. I think uh, just some of the scenes were absolutely terrific. But I'm very, I'm being very nitpicky. Um, and what I dislike, but what I do dislike is is pretty strong inside of me. Infernal Affairs, I think uh, there's probably some nuance here that I'm giving it some extra push, but I gave it an 86.1. Um, that's my over. I think that's more of a gut feeling than it is an objective feeling. To be fair, are you saying are you saying nuance because we're watching a a movie where we don't speak Mandarin and we're we're probably missing some of the actual no performance or the the writing. No, I'm saying in the sense of like it came first before The Departed, so I'm probably giving it some extra points in my head, even though I'm trying to objectively analyze it, but I don't think I can do it. Uh, I mean, what is objectivity is really what I'm trying to say. I think you're still subjective when it comes down to it, but I try my best. But with that said, like the idea that's, I gave it an 86.1, simply put, but the shots selection in the early 2000s in Asian cinema is hilarious to me, like Irisa which is like a Korean drama has some of the the shots here. And it, at the time it came out, they're groundbreaking. And Michael Mann had a lot of like uh, this type of work as well. Um, but when you go back and look at like early 2000s editing for like crime, thriller, drama, or fast paced drama, I should say, they all have like the same editing. And it's just the blurriness, you know, of like yeah. flashbacks. It's like, okay, we it's it's so overused and it doesn't look good. It, it doesn't hold very well with time, I think. 
But anyway, 86. I agree with that. So like, it would probably be a more of an 84.1, but it's a slightly above average movie on our totality of movies. Yeah. Um, I think if I did know Mandarin or, or, or uh, understood the language a little bit better, I would get get more out of this film. But I do love the set pieces. I do love the 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 br- the brevity of it. It's you know ninety something minutes rather than the bloated one hundred and fifty one. Um, I don't like that they had two younger actors, different actors play the character. That confused me. Like what, what the hell's going on? Because they didn't look anything like each other. Um, uh, and I guess there's a there's a thing with Hong Kong cinema with like the sentimentality of things. Like with the mu- the music was very like on the nose on the wearing it on a sleeve. Um, but I love the the screenplay. I love the set pieces. I love the um, the you know it, it did come first, so it's it, it paved the way of what this film and The Departed could be. I gave it an eighty three point one five. That's more of my what I would probably give this without. Yeah, but uh, yeah, total score eighty four point six two five for uh, internal affairs, infernal affairs, and ninety point six seven five um, for The Departed. But it was fun. I think um, I think next time. I don't know what, what this would look like, Donnie Brasco. I don't know how this would play out. We'd uh we maybe more discussion, but it's like it's so interesting that like there's to me I wanna get back into the cuteness. I wanna get back into like movies that I love movies that make you think and I, that's why I like clerks so much. I love movies with dialogue and any any movie that has really good dialogue I'm probably gonna love. Um and I like things that make you think, but there wasn't a whole lot of thinking and think in the sense of like non pragmatic, like not like an undercover cop thinking like, did he do it? Did she do it? I don't, not that type of thing. They're thinking like, does this make you a better person or what's the morality box here? Can you do, like something like that? The undertones are, that, 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 yeah, they're difficult. Um, and speaking of what do we have next week? Uh, we're going back to our uh, For You, For Us films, um, where we each give each other a film that they haven't seen before, um, and that's your film to talk upon. Uh, we've done this twice before, um, and this week it should be fun. I, I've never heard of the movie you gave me um, and didn't look anything up, so excited to check it out. Uh, we're going to do that next week. Yes, well, let's go into the movies themselves. So. Uh... I chose for you the one I love, and I'll give you the backstory. I'll give you the backstory in the next one um, because that, that would make more sense. But the one I love, I I actually love this movie. I, I really enjoy it. Okay, cool. And I gave you, um, uh, I gave you a uh, uh, a more recent film. Um, one of our, I think this would be the most recent uh, that we've done um, after the Oscars. Uh, but this is a movie called Problemista. Um, it's uh, Writer, director, star, um, all in one, uh, first directorial debut. Um, do you know anything about it? No. Okay, good. Cool. I, I've never heard of it. But I'm excited. It's, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to hear your thoughts on it. Um, yeah, I'm not going to say anything else. Because that's the fun of it. And that's what we <laughs> do here at CM Weekly. It, we have fun. Is it? I don't know if we have so much fun. But th- that's uh, episode 27. And then after that, uh, we will discuss that later, but nonetheless, cue the music, cut it. Cool. Um, follow us at Scene Weekly. Uh, we have merch, we have cups, we have maybe some golden glasses coming up, uh, but that's where we're at. Thanks for listening. Ta ta.